Oh, hello and welcome to Good Game Spawn Point, the show for younger gamers by gamers. I'm Hex. And I'm Barjo. <laughs> Darren! <laughs> What's up with him? Well, I told him he could tell the spawnlings all the technical specs of the Vita we'll be playing later on in the show. 16 million colours okay. capacitive touch screen. Darren, no, Darren, no, 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 no. Darren, eyes this way please. Darren, later. As well as what I'm sure will be a fascinating look at the Vita specifications, we're also going to be checking out some of its games, which will be much more interesting. <laughs> Plus, more of your questions at the Ask Spawn Point desk. But first, let's share our thoughts on the downloadable puzzler, Trine 2. Hmm. Of course, Wi-Fi will drain the battery faster, but that's just one more reason to have a battery Later, pack. Darren. Or Later, keep it Darren. plugged in the whole time. Later, Darren. You on standby. Trine 2 follows on from the colourful puzzle adventuring of the original Trine, in which three companions have to make their way through a mysterious land. What is it? Who's there? Amadeus the wizard, Zoya the sly thief, and the brave knight Pontius are reunited when the Trine appears to them once again and carries them off into the wilderness. And what a wilderness it is. I mean, this game is just stunning to look at. Rosabelle's castle shouldn't be far now. Stunning detail and a rainbow explosion of color on every screen that will make you literally stop and gape at the scene in front of you. Oh, Hex, you could have warned me about the rainbow explosion. Oh, 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 so bright. The idea is to make use of each character's individual abilities to solve environmental puzzles to help you move forward. Whew. Enemies will appear from time to time too, but not all of your adventurers can attack from the start, so you'll mostly be using your knight initially to take down foes. I found the puzzles in this game to be, on the whole, fairly balanced. Some were quite simple, but others provided a wonderful challenge and will have most humans racking their brains for a solution. It did bother me, however, that there was very little consequence for death in the game. Well, if you were using a particular character to solve a puzzle and they died, you then have to try and solve that same puzzle with a different character, which sometimes worked. But other times, you'd really need that first character to be able to get through it. <laughs> But if all three characters died, you'd simply restart at a checkpoint, which was usually only a few steps back anyway. So I agree it was a little too forgiving in that respect. I think the aim is to keep things focused on the puzzling, so you're not just replaying the same part of a level over and over again. The puzzles themselves consist mainly of conjuring boxes, redirecting water flow, avoiding flames, spikes and poisonous gases, and even using portals. It annoyed me how heavily weighted the action was on using the wizard's conjure and levitate abilities. The poor knight hardly sees any action, and the thief is just there mainly for her grapple to swing. Yeah, far too many puzzles in this game can simply be solved by building stairs out of boxes. I mean, it's the lamest way to get yourself out of a bind, and usually there is a cleverer way to do it, but it's hard not to take the magic option if it's right there. Yeah, if they made more use of the thief's arrows or the knight's hammer throw, then I think it would have been more fun, because just every time I was confronted with a new puzzle, I went straight to the wizard. Mm. There is a lot of game here, though, and it does get trickier as you progress. For a little platformer like this, I was pleasantly surprised by how accurate the physics were. Although some of the portal puzzles in the game seem to have been pulled directly from Portal itself, but it still adds a tricky complication to the mix. I liked this one, where the portals were used to redirect the fire to the bottom of a cauldron. Then you produced bubbles which you could float on up to the next platform. Oh, oh, floating. As you progress, you'll level up, and just like an RPG, you'll acquire skill points which you can use to give each character certain new abilities. I put all my points into my wizard early on, allowing him to conjure multiple items, because the only other abilities for the other characters seem to be attack abilities to help you out with enemies, which wouldn't help you with puzzling at all. Although, Zoya does get some cool ice arrows. Little insects, come to me. I crush the bones and make pudding of the flesh. There is a puzzle hint system in the game for noobs, but I'd recommend turning it off until you really feel as though you cannot continue without it. The real fun in this game is the challenge, and this game will challenge you. However, you can team up with a friend in co-op and work through in tandem to get through those puzzles together. Two heads are better than one. Yes, it must be said though that a considerable amount of difficulty is taken out of the game when you play in co-op. Because you've got two people working in tandem, that means having two characters on screen at once, where you'd normally only have one character ability. Indeed. 
did. With two characters on the screen at once, it was easy to just use the wizard to levitate another character on a box across the gap. Exactly, and if that character then gets to the next checkpoint, then the other characters will simply spawn there, so you don't even have to work out how to get everyone across. That's cheating. Ah, uh, Darren, it's not cheating if it's part of the game. It's just a tactic. <laughs> Well, I think we should wrap this up. I could stare at this game for hours. It's just so beautiful, and the the animations of the of the people in the game is just so human. Plus, all that all that detail that's gone into the fleeting background shows real love from the people who made it. So, I'm giving it eight out of ten rubber chickens. You know that bioluminescent feel really reminded me of another game that we reviewed, Creviers. It also had three characters to alternate between. Do you remember that? Mm. But here in Trine 2, I thought the puzzling was a little bit more sophisticated, and graphically, it just blew me away. It could have used a little bit more character variety, but I'm giving it eight as well. Barjo, can you levitate? I certainly can, Darren. Prove it. Mm, okay. <clears throat> you look Eating. like you need to go to the toilet. Oh, now I do. Ah! All right, well, you do that. I'll go read the news. Mm, he needs more fibre in his diet. Maybe I should switch to whole grain for my grilled cheese sandwiches. here with all the up-to-the-minute news in gaming. The winners of the Interactive Achievement Awards have been announced, recognising some of the best games from last year. Portal 2 claimed three awards for outstanding achievement in music composition, character performance and connectivity. Other winners included Skylanders Spyro's Adventure for outstanding innovation in gaming, while Little Big Planet 2 charmed its way to win Best Family Game, and Super Mario 3D Land was named Best Handheld Game of the Year. <laughs> Sesame Street Once Upon a Monster developer Double Fine has turned to the public to fund development of a new point-and-click adventure. The studio had hoped to raise almost $400,000 to fund development of their new game Double Fine Adventure through the crowdsourced funding website Kickstarter. However, the project surpassed that goal within hours of going live and went on to raise almost a million dollars in a single day. A sequel to the popular Pikmin series has been confirmed by legendary game designer Shigeru Miyamoto, the man responsible for creating Mario, Zelda and many of Nintendo's most popular series. The first two Pikmin games were originally released for the Nintendo GameCube in 2001 and 2004. Pikmin 3 was widely expected to be released for the Wii, however Miyamoto has confirmed the new game is in development for the upcoming Wii U. Welcome back. <laughs> Thanks, Darren. Now, none of us like to sweep. It's boring. We'd all rather be playing video games instead. However, now you can combine the two with Dust Force. In this fast-paced and tricky platformer, there's no story or princess to rescue. You simply choose from one of four cleaners who must clean up after the evil dirt spreaders of the world. You'll have to jump, sweep and smack your way to the end of each level with your cleaner, who moves with ninja-like reflexes, running up walls and even across ceilings. There's also a powerful special move that you can use once you've sweeped up enough dust, which instantly cleans everything around you. Each level is connected by a fairly large hub world. However, most of the levels are locked at the start. So you'll need to hunt down the unlocked ones and sweep your way through those first. Simply getting to the end of the level isn't very hard. There are checkpoints on most platforms and there's no time limit to worry about. Yes, but if you want to unlock more levels, then you'll need to sharpen those platforming skills because anything less than perfect isn't good enough. Yes, you're scored at the end of each level based on your completion and finesse. You'll need to earn a perfect S score in both to get a key, which you can then use to unlock new levels of your choice. To earn a perfect completion score, you have to sweep up every bit of dust and every baddie, while for a perfect finesse score, you have to keep your combo up all the way through the level, which means you can never take more than a few seconds between dusting something. Getting perfect scores in one category isn't too hard, but perfecting both is quite a challenge. If you mess up just one jump or miss a single speck of dusk, then you'll be reaching for the reset button. Ah oh yes, but acing a level is just so satisfying, isn't it, Darren? I just, I would have liked it if it was a tad easier though. I think having to get perfect in one category and an A rating in the other would have felt fairer. The first few levels aren't too hard to ace, but the ones you unlock after that are pretty brutal. 
And it's a shame because it is good fun to just run through the levels at your own pace without having to worry about being a perfectionist. Yeah, but I think people play these games sometimes because they like that challenge and then they can beat it and wear it as a badge of honour saying, I conquered it, I conquered this game. Fair <laughs> enough. There's also two multiplayer modes for up to four players. Survival is a head-to-head -head mode, kind of like Super Smash Bros, where you try to knock the other players off solid ground and into traps. And then there's King of the Hill, which is pretty much what you'd expect. You have to get to a certain spot on the level and hold it for a few seconds to earn a point. They're fairly basic, but good fun, but we should wrap this up, Hanks. Well, I would have liked to have seen this be a little bit more forgiving with the handing out of keys, but, you know, it's a really fun challenge and it's definitely been crafted with a lot of love, so I'm giving it seven. <laughs> I enjoyed the challenge of this game. If you if you stick with it, it's definitely rewarding. And I have to mention the soundtrack too, which was rockin'. I'm giving it 8 out of 10. It's all quite inspiring. Tell you what, I'll vacuum the den of gaming while you two go to the Ask Good Game desk. Oh, that'd be great, Darren. Oh, thanks. So accommodating. Charging my vacuum. <laughs> Darren, turn off the vacuum. I can't, you can't. Darren, turn off the vacuum cleaner. Turn off. Yes, okay. Don't suck up any of my hats this time. Last time you sucked up all of my hats and nothing to wear to the Great Parade. Darren! He ruined my collection last time. He's gonna do it again. A hat wouldn't fit in a vacuum cleaner. I'm sure you just left it in the fridge or something. You don't think about it. I'll get too frustrated. Okay, what's in the inbox this week, Hex? Well, Badge, today is a bit special because we've received this awesome package from the Pembertons, who are a whole family of spawnlings. Check it out. <gasps> It's a master sword. <laughs> yeah. Stop that. Sorry. <laughs> okay, well, let's have a look. Ooh, it's a Pokemon card. Wow. There's a drawing inside. <gasps> look at that. <gasps> Dear GGSP, I love your show. I am your number one fan. P.S. I hope you heart the card. Oh, thanks, Noah. And we do heart the card. Oh, there's more hex. Keep reading. Um, okay. Uh, my favourite game is Animal Crossing. Let's go to the city. What's yours? Oh, wow, that's oh. always the hardest question to answer, isn't it? I mean, yeah. I don't think I could even just pick one game as my favourite. No. I mean, there's so many games to pick from. There's too many games to pick from. If I, I'm going to pick my favourite game from games in the 90s that were racing games, and it's rock and roll racing. Dress is dominating the race. Down Best game ever for that particular genre at that particular time, because he raced around the track and all these rockets. Ah, oh, it was so good in the music. Oh, I rocked. All right, now look at this. Two Pokemon cards. <gasps> gimme, 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 gimme. Rude. Well, let's see what else is in here. Now they're mine. Oh, look, it's a Minecraft diorama. <laughs> look, there's a little creeper and oh, it's a block of gold. Oh, oh, oh hey, it says open over here. Oh. Uh. <clears throat> Hi, GGSP, I love your show. P.S. Darren is a total noob. <laughs> yeah. PPS, Bago needs high-fiving lessons. <laughs> don't I know it? Well, I don't know who this Bago is, but it's certainly not me because my high-fives are incredible. In fact, I was one of the people who originally created the high-five. I was part of the committee that... No, you weren't. Yeah, I was. I was part of the team and we came up with them. We thought it was awesome and now everyone in the world uses it. And if you just, if you just search that online, you'll be able to find it. Oh, come on. You did not... It says right here. High-five. Yeah. High-five. Yeah. High five. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let's just move on, shall we? What else is in here? <gasps> it's an Ocarina of Time card with a little secret note. This one's from Ethan. Thanks so much, Ethan. What else, uh... <gasps> it's another Minecraft card. This one's from Levi. <sighs> Oh, great work, Levi. Oh, these are amazing. We're going to put all of these up on Darren's wall. Thank you so much to all the Pembertons. <laughs> I think it's time we move on to some emails now. Hex, oh, what do you say? Good idea, Bajo. Uh, this one's from Hannah and Noah in Sydney, New South Wales. Hi, GGSP. We already asked you this question before. We would like to know, is there any good games on the iPod Touch for free and that are for kids years 7 to 9? Please answer. Thanks, Hannah and Noah. Ah, oh, well, Noah and Hannah, there's just so much out there on the App Store that it can be hard to know where to start. But I can think of quite a few decent freebies that would be suitable for you guys. Hmm. If you want a quick arcade game, well, I definitely recommend Jetpack Joyride. You get a great game for free, and there's never really a point where you feel like you need to spend money to have fun. 
I was pretty impressed by Metal Storm Wingman too. It's got nice 3D graphics and fun jet fighting action. Plus it has multiplayer, so if you've got two iPods, you can play together. And if you want a long-term kind of game that you'll keep coming back to, then we suggest Space City and Tiny Tower. They're great. They can be a little on the slow side of things, and they do encourage you to spend money to make things go faster, but you can still have fun without buying any extras. And there's heaps of other good freebies out there as well. There's Trial Extreme 2, which has a decent little motorbike trial game, and GT Racing is a nice fully featured racing game. Then there's Star Blitz, which has some decent arcadey space fighting action. And you can't go wrong with classics like Angry Birds Free or Words with Friends, which is great for building up your spelling and vocabulary skill. And I've been playing a lot of Triple Town recently. It's one of those really simple but totally addictive ideas. You just have to match three or more items to make a better one while trying not to run out of space. Well, those should keep you busy for a while. A while? A while. <laughs> Indeed. Well, let's move on to this one now from Eddie in Hebersham? Which Habersham. is in New South Wales. Hebersham? Hi, this is Ed. I just wanted to know if there will be a Skylanders 2. If you don't answer, I will become a noob. Thanks, Ed. Out. Well, we're happy to say that yes, Eddie, there will be a Skylanders 2 coming out at the end of the year, and it's going to be called Skylanders Giants. From what we know, it's going to feature an all-new campaign with eight new giant Skylander toys alongside eight new regular Skylanders for you to collect as well. And it'll be compatible with your current Skylander toys too, so all of your levels and customizations will carry straight over. Hopefully it turns out all right. Mm. But let's move on to this one now from Link in Maryland's New South Wales. Is it Mary in Maryland? I would imagine it would be so by the name of Marylands. Well, was it Toowoomba in Toowoomba? It's, uh, it was Woomba. It was Toowoomba. There's too much Woomba going on. Hi, Good Game. I just got my DE tier year nine laptop recently and I was wondering what games can run on the laptop. Thanks, Good Game. Well, Link, the thing is, those laptops are meant to only be for educational use, so they're actually almost impossible to game on. Yeah, from what we've heard, they're made so that you can't run any .exe file, which basically rules out running most games and programs. Also, they block a whole lot of websites too, so we'd say most sites with games will be blocked. But without actually having one ourselves, well, we can't really check out which sites work. Mm. I'm pretty sure the ABC3 website isn't blocked, though, and that has a game section, so you should be able to play those. But remember, spoilings, only game in your free time, and don't be messing around with games in class or you get in heaps of trouble. Unless, of course, you're doing a game design class or something like that. Well, I think we have time for one more, and we've got this one from Eddie in Hobart, Tasmania. Will there be any LEGO games coming out this year, and will they be out on PlayStation Vita? Well, there's three LEGO games that we know are coming out this year, Eddie, and two of them are coming out on the Vita. Yeah, LEGO Harry Potter Years 5 to 7 is coming out on Vita in March, and then at the end of the year, LEGO Batman 2 DC Super Heroes will also be coming out on all consoles, including the 3DS and Vita. And LEGO City Stories is the third one, and that will be coming out sometime this year. I've also heard some fairly strong rumours that there's going to be a LEGO Lord of the Rings game coming out this year, but mm. until that's actually confirmed, you should probably take that with a pinch of salt. Pinch of salt? Why would you put pinches of salt in your console? No, but it's just an expression. No, I'm not saying to put salt in your console. I'm just but saying it's an expression like how long is a piece of string or. Don't, a don't pinch listen to hex spawnings. Do not put salt in your console. No, I didn't say that. We'll I be just... back next week to answer as many of your questions as possible. Haven't you ever used an expression like a stitch in time saves nine? Oh, yeah, all the time. My favourite expression is a piece of cheese makes you please. It's a manners. That just, those Amazon. are words that rhyme. They just words wasn't that rhyme saves you time. That anyone... And a few last cobwebs under here. Thanks, Darren. Done. It's uh, very no clean worries. in here. Yeah. <clears throat> Still messed up our chance, though. <laughs> All right, Darren, now's your moment. Give us the tech specs of the Vita. Affirmative. Codenamed the PCH1000, the PlayStation Vita is powered by an ARM Cortex-A9 core processor, which can display around 16 million colors yes, okay, on it. Yes, OK, Darren, but is it any good? D oh. <laughs> well, first of all, we should point out that this is a specific one that's been sent to us for review, so it's not exactly the same as the one you'll find in the shops, but well, it's pretty close. Mm. And it's a pretty great device. It's got a wonderful touch screen, the speakers sound fantastic. It makes going back to a DS or a PSP pretty difficult. It also fits quite comfortably in your hands and has a nice weight to it, although it does take a little bit of getting used to the trigger placement there. Mm. I thought the buttons were a little bit too small for my liking, but I did get used to it over time. I just love having two sticks. The PSP only had one 
fun, and so a lot of games just didn't play very well. I do like the touchscreen on the front, it's very responsive, but this trackpad, backpad thing, I don't know, I can't think of a good use for that, and I haven't found one yet. It is a very powerful device, and you feel that when you're playing some of the games, but you do pay for that power, because I found the battery life on some of the games would only be about three hours, and once again, it's not the final product, but that's still pretty fast to run out of juice. All right, guys, well, let's take a look at the games. Yes, well, the console was launching with two racing games, so we thought we'd check them out first. Modern Nation Races Road Trip is what I've been thrashing. And what have you been playing, Hex? Well, I've gone back to the future with the latest in the Wipeout series. It's called Wipeout 2048, and it's staying true to the original. It's scarily fast. The first Wipeout came out on the original PlayStation in 1995. It didn't even work with the first dual analog controller, which wasn't released until two years later. Its blend of dance music, blistering speed, gravity-defying tracks and lasers is what made it famous. And all of that is still here. The speed is so important to what Wipeout is all about. You just need to stay on your toes. You need to react quickly and it just never lets up. It's one of those games that has a knack for really getting you in the zone and it doesn't even get frustrating. You just keep coming back for more. You need steely concentration, though. Oh, I just keep bouncing off the walls, no! It does look great, though, doesn't it? It's so beautiful. Yeah, in fact, it's one of the best-looking games I think I've played on a handheld. Beautiful cities glide by, and I especially love the way explosions light up their surroundings in a gorgeous glow. 2048's got full competitive eight-player online racing, too. But even cooler is that you can actually race against a friend who's playing Wipeout HD on the PlayStation 3, a completely different console. Wow. Well, what are you giving it, Hex? Well, I think this is a phenomenal achievement, and it's not only one of the best portable racing games I've played, I dare say it's one of the best racing games of all time. I'm giving it 9 out of 10 rubber chickens. Big call. Well, I've been playing Modern Nation Races Road Trip, and let's say it has some problems. Mod Nation Races Road Trip is the follow-up to Mod Nation Races, which came out in 2010. It became unofficially but affectionately known as Little Big Planet as a kart racer. But I can tell you that Little Big Planet karting is now being developed, so consider yourself up to date and denooped. <laughs> Thanks, Darren. Well, coming off Wipeout to play Mod Nation is a little bit depressing. I understand that go-karts will never be as fast as futuristic flying machines, but it's no excuse for the slow racing in this game. The carts just putt along, and it's even more obvious when you're on an open stretch of road with no boost. And when this happens, you can't help but feel like you're driving through wet cement. Oh, that happened to me once. Remember when I got wet cement in my multi-directional wheelbase? Oh, how could I forget, Darren? It took ages to clean all that gunk out of your gear. Ah, affirmative. Anyway, combine the slow driving with some pretty average environments, and you just get the feeling that this game is a bit undercooked, especially if you go back and play the PS3 version, which looks pretty good. You'd expect this not to be as good, but I think they've pulled it back a bit too far. Single player racing is limited to time trial and a basic career mode, but it still loads very slowly. I did like the creation modes though. Making your own tracks and trying them out is always fun. Can you still share your tracks on this though? You can, but the only real multiplayer is what's called ad hoc, which means you have to play with someone in the same room as you. Mm. Well, what are you giving it then? Look, I think it's it's a bit rushed. It's got some launch-itis. What's that? Well, if a game is stricken with launch-itis, it means that it's a launch game for a new console and the developers just haven't had enough time to make it exactly how they wanted to, and it's sometimes missing a few features. And sadly, I think that's the case with Modern Nation Races Road Trip. I'm giving it 6 out of 10 rubber chickens. Have you ever suffered from launch-itis, Darren? Negative, negative. I, remember, oh, I can always activate my rockets. I, I never have any trouble I launching time, my rockets. Re remember a time, Darren, when your hands kept falling off. That's a bit of launch-itis. Oh, that was awkward. Yeah. That, that, that was back when I was 1.0. That doesn't count. We got some super glue now, though. He's fine. He's Affirmative. All glued up. You betcha. Sadly, that's it for another episode of Good Game Spawn Points. But we shall return next week with more games, including Scribblenauts Remix. <laughs> That game responds to voice commands, although you'll look a bit silly on the bus. If you're online, don't forget to go to the Spawn Point website to vote in our poll and share your thoughts. We love hearing from you guys. Till next week, Hex out. Bajo out. Darren out. Say, so Darren, do you respond to voice commands? Oh, affirmative. Mm. Okay, Darren, lots of puppies. No puppies. Darren, sandwiches. No sandwiches. Maybe if you use the magic word, Bajo. <clears throat> Darren, rainbows, please. Charging my rainbow! Ah, nice rainbows, Darren. Always look at rainbows with sunglasses on.